the little video on my process. So I've got two panels. So there's that one. And I've got some bits on it because I've let it dry outside. <laughs> and oops, there's this one. And now both are on wooden panels. I'm going to turn that around a little bit more, make it a little bit more. That's right. Um, so two panels. And I, when I was painting them, I'm using acrylics to uh, put as my undercoat. And then I was, as when I get the desired colours underneath, I'll be moving to oils um, to create a more uh, lustrous uh, end result. Anyway, when I was applying the paints, I thought this is yesterday, that they were looking really rather pale and gentle, which is <laughs> what I was aiming for. Because <laughs> I want I want there to be a glow of um, warm colours. There's some pinks and some orange and the blues and whites that I've been working with. Um, and it's interesting that you come back... OK, light changes. I don't know what's going on there. Works, marks the spot. Um, light changes and you change your emotions and your personality and all that sort of thing. Everything changes. So I just wanted to record where, how I begin to move these forward a little bit and um, it's interesting you think you're in a hair free zone we've got cats and you get the hairs <laughs> absolutely everywhere i'm sure you all experience the same sort of thing um i've just popped over here because i wanted to get and i've forgotten oh no matter i'm gonna get straight in with this because i want to ramp up the um the lovely undercoat with pinks and oranges but keeping it you know relatively light so dollop of pink on there i think it's actually called magenta let's have a little look no nope, permanent rose all right what i want to do is um if i tell you uh what my aim is it's, it's quite interesting i will just pop my head in a minute but i'll do that later um is I, I want to build up the this side here i want to although i rather like that so i might do it this side so i want to build up the sense that there is some land and then have some lighter backdrops but before I do that I just want to add a bit more of this really gorgeous vibrant pink that will sing from underneath the, the layers um, I'm using a very cheap nylon brush so I'm just as you can see almost like cross hatching I just want to get those really pretty colours underneath always looking for a, a feeling rather than an exact image. Um, I think that's the kind of work that I will always create because it's got an emotional attachment to place or well place really, I do <laughs> So you can see I'm really scrubbing in and working quite dry um, and down here I've got a very old bottle that was some sort of cleaning fluid but I can just squirt a little bit on my brush and then I can get that mark even softer by working into it. This is why I like to work on a wooden panel because I can be quite vigorous in my mark making and energetic which I find quite um, useful for the, toward the end result. Just going to put a little bit more of the permanent rose on. Touch more water. I'm going to hang up. I'm seeing these bits and pieces are just paraphernalia that I use <laughs> in my practice. Some photographs and bits and pieces to remind me of techniques that I use. So some of these marks I may well leave as they are. Time will tell as the painting evolves. I do think it's fascinating watching an artist's process, so <laughs> you're now watching mine. <laughs> so let's get that soft right there because I don't want that to be too strong, but I can see, and I'm not sure the lighting is brilliant in here, said hair, huh. um, for you to see, but uh, I'm just getting a sort of softer mark, a bit more of a pinky, bluey, purpley kind of tone, which is much more desirable. Okay, just going to have a little bit more of the orange. Now this is um, cadmium orange hue. And just a little bit more of that. Try to be less generous than I would be normally. I don't know if you can see a tiny little bit. So I'm just 
blend that in a little bit here and there. Again, some of these marks will remain. Hence gloved hands, always get my hands in there. Yeah, some of these marks will remain as an undercurrent. Again, adding interest. I'm not sure about that one. But we'll leave it for now. Maybe soften it just a tiny bit with another brush. I don't pin my board down if I can help it or canvas because I like to be able to move it. So that's uh, why it rattles a bit and it's free. Free to wander around. <laughs> soften that a little as well. There we go. Okay. Um, very keen to get onto the other panel. So it's good to work on a couple simultaneously because you don't get too attached to it. You're constantly looking at it thinking, how's that working? You know, can I change that a bit? I'm just going to put a little bit of white on here now. The reason I leave the tubes here is just easier and quicker to just grab it. Um, when I'm working, I yeah, just don't want too much of that. Actually, I might just take a little bit of that. I'm going to hang on to it in my hand. <laughs> you watch me go and wipe it on my clothes. <laughs> right, so softening that quite significantly. Again, another cheap brush. So working into the paint that's already existing on the the wooden panel. So muting it, making it a little bit more pastel, quite at this early stage. A little bit more here. Let's touch more than I actually wanted. Let's go with that gust of water and I can blend that across. That's it. Now oh, that's um Oh, that's pleasing. <laughs> it's interesting how excited you get. Oh, now I'm going to leave that. That looks quite a nice veil over that stronger mark. I'm going down here. I'm actually thinking about composition at this point, so I want to actually have an area there that's quite straight. I'm going to blend it off over here. Gone quiet, and that's because I'm thinking. I'm quite sure it's very dangerous. I'll just knock that blue back a little bit. See, I've hardly got anything on the brush, and the uh, brush is quite damp. So it's really quite lovely to just take your time. Um, it's a, almost a comment to myself as much as that is about the process. Um, I have painted with watercolours for years and that is very speedy, very spontaneous, which is and something I still love using. But um, when you're building layers like this into a, a mixed media or an oil paint or whatever, you have to keep going back in and it's it's actually really rather meditative. <laughs> Say that when you had a glass off. <laughs> But it's um, most enjoyable. I really like that bit. I'm just the old adage: if you like it, step away. Could become quite true here because I, I just want to give that a little bit more of a definite bit of white. So it's taking off almost as much as I put on. There we go. Okay, I'm going to leave that for now. So I just blend that in a little bit. Um, yeah, I think I'd like to just see, I've, I've stepped back a little bit, so I'm assessing constantly, soften that area just a tiny bit more. Creating a sweep, when I do the sweeping, the more curved marks, that's what I'm thinking of the, the horizon really. 
rather than it being so very flat. We're just trying to keep it soft. Yeah, okay. I'm going to leave that one there. I'll have to clean my hands. I'll pop over here a second, get a tissue. And stand on a box. Right, so I'll leave that one for a second. If I bring it a little bit closer, you might be able to see that I've softened that a bit more with the light on it. Okay, now I'm going to move to the other one and give it the same treatment. So when you see the two in tandem, if I bring that up a second, back up here, then you can see how much softer the one is that I've worked into already. And um, many more layers to go, so I'll just keep charting this, this journey. So, right in my pocket, get back to my oranges and pinks. Okay, so there's some orange and pink on here, which I want to think about putting on. So this one, I'm going to have much more of a horizontal bit of land. So there's going to be some land is from here and across and from here. Now I spend large amounts of time in the natural world. So I think there's not a lot of point in me keep looking at photographs. I mean, there are heaps here, all my own photographs that I've taken, but I think when you've spent a long time in the, on the horizon or in the horizon or in the landscape, that I think you you become quite at one with it. So I don't need to keep explaining it. Right, I'm saying about going lighter. I'm actually going to get a little bit of indigo now. I'll pop that back over here. <clears throat> the reason being, so I just want to remind myself of these bits of land that will be just kind of like shadow really, just a suggestion, nothing particularly organised about them, just that it is land. So that's now gone very dark and very blue, I'm sure you can see, yep. Okay, we're always remembering to echo my colours around my painting, so that gets to have a fraction of that up there. Now, I'm just looking, I'm using the video as a means of checking that. I'm not sure that's quite doing what's wrong on the jaw. I might just come in down here a little bit more. And um, vigorously. Okay, I'll leave that for now. I'll pop my blue brush down over there. But I'm going to come in with some of this orange that was on my other brush, my initial brush, and work into that a little. I'm going to have some of the permanent rose on here as well now. So at this point, what I don't want is any really seriously saturated colours. I don't want that just to remain indigo and that just to remain orange. I want it all to have a, you know, a bit of blending going on. So I dab it around and mix it in. On the panel, I'll have much more interesting marks than I will have if I just have a single colour. Um, I'm just pausing a second because I'm going to create myself a couple of straight lines. This rarely happens, <laughs> but I want to just mask that area and a little bit over there on the opposite side, <clears throat> excuse me, to remind myself that that's obviously a bit of land that's solid and angular rather than being curvaceous. I don't know if you can see that I'm blending the colours. A little bit more of the orange. A little bit too pink at the moment. Touch of that in there. And that in there. Let's just tickle that in a little bit. Constantly changing my brush marks so that I don't have anything too form, too form, sorry, too formulaic, too neat, all of the above. <laughs> and some pink. 
um, and that's just again me reminding myself that I'm working, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> pardon me, abstracting from the landscape, not copying and representing faithfully. This is all about a memory, a feet, <coughs> golly, <coughs> excuse me, a feeling. I've lifted some of that off, but not to worry. Right, coming over here for the white. <coughs> I'm just going to have a quick slurp of water. See if I tickle. Okay, back to the white now. Now that's really quite a strong mark. I liked it when I painted it, um, as you do. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's every chance I'll leave quite a bit of it there. But sometimes it's just soften like the other one and uh, not quite obliterated but I'm going to come over those areas of the land. Remember this is just early stages. I'm going to pop some of that down there a second but I will be moving that around because it can't stay like that. Okay, yeah. water required. Dilute that, block over there. I honestly can't remember where I bought these brushes. I was about a set of three or four. They were as cheap as chips. Um, I'm really sorry, I can't remember what they were. I want to say, oh, don't do that because I'll lift that. Don't do it. Um, yeah, I'm honestly not sure where, but they might, might have been Hobbycraft, but as I say, I'm not massively sure. But oh, they are fantastic for what I'm doing at the moment. Right, I can see I've pretty much obliterated that orange. I'm going to lift some of that off in a second. Let's just get this, these broad sweeps. So it's really knocking back what I'd started with. So you can see the reason why you do need to have, or give yourself time, should I say, more hairs and build those layers so that you're constantly looking, assessing, thinking, having a little conversation with yourself. Is that working? Do I like that? Do I want to change that? And so it goes, I actually, oh, having that moment of excitement, I'm loving what's appearing. You know, it's, this is when, do you know what the process is revealing itself and, um, helping to lead me forward in this painting, which is wonderful. I'm just pull that back a bit because I don't want that hard mark for the land, but not for the <laughs> sky particularly. So that's it, just give that a bit of a... Now the same old thing, I can see a hair's got stuck in there, darn. I'll give it a bit of a... Sometimes I have to give my finished pieces a bit of a light sand um, before varnishing them and that will just lift off those marks that you're not all that happy with <laughs> or the cat's hairs in this instance. All right, I'm going to take that off because I, yeah okay great I've got that. Can you see that hard edge? Just about fabulous. So I'm kind of thinking I'm at the coast which um, we were the other day actually having a super day at the coast. That was wonderful. That's where my head is. Oh, look, get this one off. I don't know, I have a little bit of collage on. Let me take that one off. Okay, nice. A blob. Mm -hmm. So let's just work into that. Okay. What I'm going to do, because I feel I'm going to fiddle too much, is possibly stop fairly soon so that I can just assess, and I didn't lift this bit here that I said I was going to, so I will do that in a moment with a diddy little brush look. I'll put a little bit of this on that, a little spray. Maybe just lift some of that out just to reveal some of it. Not too much of it, just a little bit. Isn't that really lovely? Almost like the sunset, and I don't normally paint like that but 
sometimes things just happen and I think, do you know what? I'm going to go with that. That's, uh, that's doing its job nicely. So as I step away, I can see some um, brush marks that I'm, I'm not too happy with. So right now I'm scrubbing that because I want that to come off a little bit more. And this could be an area that does get a, a little bit of a sand. I'm working into that as well. Softening that edge. So in my head, this is a coast with uh, distant rocks and then maybe a bit of a rock pool. And I'm just going to look at that again. This is a good technique, by the way, wetting the brush rather than wetting the surface because you can a little bit more control which is quite nice and we don't control want control all the time but every now and again it's quite good <laughs> best let the process talk to you so again whoopsie trying to remember is reminding myself to change direction with mark making it's so easy to do the same marks over and over again um, and then create a bit of a boring piece of work or maybe boring's a bit harsh. Maybe something that's a bit too safe when the, if you're trying to work in a slightly more um, exciting way, I guess. Blend that off. It's all about discovery, isn't it? I'm not altogether sure about that piece, but I again might leave it for now and uh, come back to it. Well, I had a dribble, unfortunately. I've got a dark mark there, so I'm going to put the tiniest little bit of indigo. In fact, that little bit might be plenty, but I can smudge around a little bit. Yeah, there we are. Again, I might create a, a blob <laughs> that uh, jumps out at you, but can all be altered as we go along. Let's put a bit of orange on it to knock it back because otherwise it's going to be too obvious. And if I just go like that, there we are. You can still see it a bit as a straight line, but I'm going to leave it for now and uh, see what happens. I'm not altogether sure about this, but again, yeah, it's early stages. So, I think I'm going to point my little tape stock. Always say that and then carry on without fail. There's a mark there that was really jumping out at me. Now these marks will all dry a little bit lighter, so I'm going to have to be patient. You know, I could take a hairdryer to them, but um, it's that lovely discovery that's exciting come back into the studio after a break, you know, go make a cup of tea or whatever and come back and see what's happening. So, that one's, if I bring that, this will, hopefully it'll come closer without getting too jiggled about. And then, give it a chance to function, um, not function, what am I looking for? Focus. So I've really moved them forward, both. Hopefully you can see them. Now I'm resting that there. <gasps> and I'm going to step back, oopsie, and move you back a little bit. Hopefully. I think you just about see my light at the top. You can see how I've really moved things forward. Um, I'm very tempted to put some dark in like I've done here onto this one, but at the moment I'm I the oh, do you know. Yeah, I am gonna put some dark here. Let's just do that bit. So this one I'm gonna leave for the minute over here <clears throat> and going with the dark on this one and it's going to go literally right in just get in there <laughs> no messy so this is where there's some land or it could be trees and um I haven't quite decided. See how it goes. Make that a bit more of a definite bit of land. 
that little splodge. How's that looking? Do I want to go any higher? They might go just a smidge higher up here. There we go. That's it. That's starting to feel like it's got some oomph to it. <laughs> All right, super. And again, going with the orange and pink. I'll stick with my hand painting. <laughs> it's fun. So turning that more of a green. And creating these really gorgeous undertones for your painting is, I think, one of the biggest joys in the creative world. For me. <laughs> yes. Mm, the odd splodge, splodge, that's a bit stronger. Can just sit there nicely. Super. Could go in there more light, but I'm going to let that settle first. Right, so that's moving the process on a little bit further. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time.